Hi, welcome to The One True Church. I'm Hugh Whitmore. Today's lesson is entitled, Paul is a False Apostle and False Prophet, Part 2. This is Lesson 6, Part 2, in my series on the entire truth of the Bible. In Part 1, we established that Paul did not have the authority from God, from Jesus, or from his own character to create his false testimony. And here in Part 2, we'll discuss how Paul cleverly twisted the truth on many occasions, and how he also told a number of direct lies. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14.34, Let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. First of all, the law never ordered women to be silent in the church, and Jesus never said women shouldn't speak up in the faith. So is Paul lying to keep women from serving God? If you are a woman watching this now, and you believe that Paul's teachings were inspired by God, do you keep your Christian opinions to yourself? You should, if you believe in Paul. This would mean, by the way, that you can't even teach Sunday school. Keep that in mind if you believe Paul is inspired by God. Peter said in Acts 15.7, that he was sent by Jesus to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. Paul said in Acts 22:21 that he was sent by Jesus to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. Who's telling the truth, Peter or Paul? As I mentioned in part one of this lesson, Paul told his miracle conversion story three times in three different ways in Acts 9, 22, and 26. Which story is correct? And which story did Paul lie about? Or did he lie about all three? Study those and let me know. Jesus said the last thing that had to happen before the end times comes is, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. That's the kingdom gospel and not the gospel of grace, by the way. Now, Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, that the last thing that had to happen before the end times comes is, that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Who's telling the truth, Paul or Jesus? And who is this son of perdition that Paul names as critical to the end of the world? Paul does not name him. But Jesus had already named the son of perdition in John 17, 12, when he spoke to the Father about the apostles. Those whom you gave me I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus, of course, is referring to the traitor Judas, and he is the man of perdition. Paul says the son of perdition is coming someday. Who's telling the truth? Jesus or Paul? This, too, is a repeating from part one of this lesson, but Paul said of salvation, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. That's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Paul excludes works from salvation, and Jesus only speaks of works for salvation. Is Jesus telling the truth, or is Paul telling the truth regarding how we receive salvation? And if grace creates salvation, why didn't Jesus teach this in his earthly ministry? Never one word for it. Jesus says in Revelation 2.2 2, to the church at Ephesus, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. This church Jesus is speaking to is the church to whom Paul wrote that we're saved by grace and not by works. Even though Jesus praised their works, so which lying apostle is Jesus speaking of? Do you think it's Paul? I think it's Paul. James, the brother of Jesus, said in James 2.24, You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. And Paul says we're justified by grace through faith and not by works. Who's telling the truth, Paul or James? Jude, another brother of Jesus, said in Jude 1.4, for certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace 
of our God into lewdness and deny our only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Which person who changed the meaning of grace from its prior use do you think Jude was talking about? Think it was Paul? I do. 1 John 2, 18-19 says, Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. If, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. Paul fits this phrasing. After Paul's fake conversion story with Jesus in the desert, rather than immediately go to the real apostles for training, because Paul had never been with Jesus, he went out from them, as John reported, as Paul said, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. That's Galatians 1.17. Paul was in Arabia three years. Is Paul the Antichrist John was speaking of, who went out from them? I think it is. All of the apostles chosen by Jesus were with him from the baptism of John until the ascension. And when Judas was replaced with Matthias, these same rules were required by the real apostles. Paul had none of these qualifications. How can Paul call himself an apostle? He can't. Jesus promised the real apostles a reward in heaven in Matthew 19, 28. Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. In Revelation, the real apostles are shown receiving a reward in the new kingdom. Paul is not shown as receiving a reward in the new kingdom. If Paul were chosen directly by Jesus to bring a new method of salvation and lead the entire church, why isn't Paul given a reward in heaven in the book of Revelation as the real apostles were? Answer, Paul is not a real apostle. He's a false apostle. In Matthew 23, 9, Jesus said, Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. In 1 Corinthians 4.15, Paul said, For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Sounding like he's acting like he's God. Begotting someone. Is it okay that Paul disobeyed this command of Jesus, calling himself Father? Jesus confirmed all of the Ten Commandments and that they were required for salvation when he was teaching, except possibly Sabbath keeping. It's a little hard to tell. However, in 2 Corinthians 3, 7, Paul calls the Ten Commandments the ministry of death written and engraved on stones. Paul is saying that the Ten Commandments never created salvation. Of course, that's false. Why did Paul deny God's original laws and say this? In Matthew 19, 6, when speaking of the permanency of marriage, Jesus said, so then, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. In 1 Corinthians 7.29, Paul said, The time is short, so that from now on, even those who have wives should be as though they had none. Why did Paul treat marriage as disposable at a time when following God's law was so critical? Because Paul was there to destroy God's law. Paul speaks rhetorically about lying to spread the gospel in Romans 3, 7. For if the truth of God has increased through my lie to his glory, why am I still also judged as a sinner? Paul also speaks of his deception in 1 Corinthians 9, 19-23, where he pretends to be something he isn't to certain groups to spread the gospel. Do God or Jesus allow you to mislead others about who you are to spread the gospel? Would you mislead others? about who you are to spread the gospel? I hope not. Paul did. In 1 Corinthians 8.8, 8, Paul said eating food sacrificed to idols was neither here nor there. But food does not commend us to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are we the worse. However, in 
Revelation 2.14, Jesus chastises the church at Smyrna for eating food sacrificed to idols. But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Why would Paul approve of this abomination that Jesus hated? Paul is out to destroy salvation. In Acts 28, 3-6, Paul was bitten by a poisonous snake, and the story goes like this. A viper came out because of the heat and fastened onto his hand, but he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm had come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. Do you believe Paul survived the bite of a deadly viper with no ill effects? I don't, unless it was by the power of Satan. In Genesis 22, God tells Abraham to kill his own son, Isaac, and Abraham goes to do it. Just as Abraham was about to slay his son, the angel of the Lord, speaking for God, said in Genesis 22:12, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God. And in 22.18, in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Paul speaks of this event in Romans 4.13. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through his righteousness of faith. The original scripture says obedience to God, and the word faith is not used. Paul lied to say Abraham was justified by faith. James, the brother of Jesus, said of this very claim by Paul, Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? That's James 2.21. And also in James 2.23-24, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Who is correct? James, the brother of Jesus, or Paul? You know, there's much more on Paul's false testimony, but I'm going to stop here because otherwise it would go on way too long. You can do your study of the Bible, absorb God's word, and receive his righteousness. And I hope you see the value in these two lessons I've done on Paul. Paul was an evil man sent by evil people to turn believers, that's us, away from the rules behind God's offer of salvation through his son, And so far, it has worked. Following and preaching Paul is blasphemy that glorifies Satan and steals glory from God. Thus, God cannot overcome sin and Satan. So we have waited nearly 2,000 years for salvation to be fulfilled while Satan rules this earth with a cruel iron fist. Now is the time. Please join me in turning away from the false apostle and false prophet Paul joyfully return to the kingdom teachings that God sent with Jesus, the teachings that bring us salvation. Get baptized into God's kingdom. Abstain from sin. Fast and pray. And soon, Jesus will be back for us.